Hello and welcome. I am Ben the Best Five, and you're watching yet another one of my Kerbal Space Program videos. And this one here is a revisit where I am revisiting my video from a while back, which was the last one in my career playthrough series before I got bored and, erup and abruptly stopped. Um, and in this episode, I am sending an SSTO to the base where it will be able to refuel and then send it off to a destination however that's coming in the next video I was toying with the idea of maybe saying it to Ike just because I haven't been there on that save before however I figured that's probably worthy of a video all by itself because although I could compact it into one video it probably wouldn't be of the quality I want or expect from my videos because I try and condense them to about 10 to 20 minutes because I've done research with my videos and you guys don't watch my videos if they're any longer than that so because of that I'm not going to make them any longer than that so I'm splitting them over two videos to just make sure I can keep all of the important details I wanted to keep but also yeah so the current uh, idea for this in the next video by the way uh, in part two is going to be saying it to Ike unless anyone has a better suggestion I could refuel on Minmus and have a lot of potential Delta V's so realistically most places in the KSP universe are on offer but unless anyone has a better idea Ike is the current go-to however if you do have a better idea uh, please let me know in the comments and I will definitely consider it especially if it gets support or if lots of people say the same thing, then I'll definitely do that because, generally speaking, if my fans say that something's a good idea, then it's probably a good idea. Anyway, um, the SSTO there is called the Orbital Explorer. It's just a general um, SSTO designed for, um, for exactly kind of this sort of purpose. Uh, it carries three crew. And it, it's designed to basically go anywhere in the Kerbal Space Program universe with refueling. I actually took it from one of my other saves, um, uh, where I had basically set up a very similar sort of thing, where I had refueling outposts on places like Ike and um, um, uh, Val and Gilly and stuff like that. And I actually had these Orbital Explorer line of SSTOs able to explore the entire galaxy with these fuel depots. So I guess this is kind of like a part of that, except on a completely different save and with a better um, refuel station than previously seen. Um, yeah. Also, you might notice the um, uh, thing on the top of the. Um, SSTO craft which is being used to or will be used to connect the um, it's basically a refueling hose it will connect to the station and fuel be transferred to the craft via that I may have to finally find a way to stop um, built up structures like that made out of robotic parts from flying everywhere in launch uh, basically what you do is you have them fixed at a point by f in this example here because I'll need to obviously undock and redock the fuel hose it's in fact held in by a matching decoupler and yeah it holds it in place and it's going to stay there until I need it to for use in my um well I need to use it to connect to the um station and perform some refueling. Now you might have just noticed there that I I hit Minmus on my second orbit. That's just because m the game is sometimes a bit glitchy like that, and I was obviously going for the first encounter just because that's closest. But sometimes you just have to settle for you know the second encounter that you get. Anyway, here's ju me just finishing up my. Uh, encounter burn. My actual burn to Minmus itself wasn't as smooth as I wanted it to be, 
just simply because of where Kerbin and stuff were all placed relative to each other when I got to or when I burned for Mimis I actually ended up dropping my craft slightly into the atmosphere which actually caused enough drag that my burn was slightly off which is why I had a slightly bigger correction burn than normal but it's all okay we were able to recover as you can see here and the great thing about Minmus now um, if you don't know it, why I chose it for a landing location um, is because it's got a couple of advantages yes it is the hardest to quote unquote get to as far as distant goes because it does take the greatest amount of delta V of all the celestial bodies in Kerbin's sphere of influence because it's further away than the Mun actually orbits entering a circular orbit around it is easier than entering one around the Mun uh, just simply because um, it's smaller and that also means that taking off is is uh, cheaper which means that when you take off after refueling you spend less fuel uh, taking off which means that you have more left over then to go ahead and um, go to other destinations now I I waited a few orbits until my craft orbit was passing over that of the station and since Minmus is relatively small I just need to aim for its general area and touch down nice and close and then perform some very very tricky um, low gravity no atmosphere driving and believe it or not flying a or well, driving sorry a massive craft across the surface of um, a body with almost no gravity and absolutely no atmosphere is actually rather challenging. It uh, yeah, it took me a quite a while to actually drive the kilometer or so to the refueling station from when we ended up landing. It's just a pretty stock standard miss landing from here. I was actually able to get the landing really nice and gentle which I, I quite liked in fact I even slowed it down to um to regular speed instead of the double speed that you've been seeing for the rest of the, the video so that you could just admire the elegance I guess you could say of a minus landing and now you notice here that I am actually cancelling my velocity out um, so they go straight down that was actually deliberate because I knew that I was overshooting the location of the fuel station so as a result I did that just to bring my landing position a little bit closer to hopefully make my travel a little bit easier um, yeah the travel itself though is quite treacherous and arduous as I have alluded to, and I'll get to the reasons why uh, later. Anyway, here we are, just touching down. I managed to nail the suicide burn pretty perfectly, you know. I throttled up and gave it just a little bit of throttle, and I never actually needed to turn it, turn off the throttle, because just as I was about to hit the surface, the velocity cancelled out to zero and from there I was able to um, yes that might have looked like it turned off but that's just because some engines like this one if you have it on like 5% then it, it it like says it's off but like I swear it wasn't all the way off I guess I don't remember turning it off but replaying the footage it looks like I might have anyway we can just use our RCS to lower ourselves down to the ground very gently and from here you are now going to see some um, very sped up footage of me driving this thing because well it um, yeah definitely took quite a while so my general idea right was to get the position of the refueling station on the map point towards it and burn towards it I couldn't actually see the fuel station because it is rather small even though well it, it it's kind of a it's a big structure but compared to the size of Minmus which although it's small it's still bigger than a refueling station 
it was hard to spot and in fact might not have been within the physics distance uh, which means I landed more than a few k's away from it although interestingly I would have thought I would have seen the um, tracking little tracking boxes that show off around objects the little red boxes and it's even like even debris for example has those boxes if you're like in a similar orbit to it so unless you're like within physics range so I guess or like really close because like when you're docking to a space station like the little tracking box will disappear so I guess perhaps that's what happened in this case I actually did land within the kind of physics zone that Kerbal Space Program a lot which then meant it didn't have a tracking box available anyway that that did mean that I was you know slightly off to the side and meant that turning was a great idea the only issue is that without a vacuum and wheels that aren't very great at turning my vehicle um, did wasn't actually able to turn which meant I realized I had to actually um, just me checking the brakes were on there I actually had to um, yeah, use the engine to do all the steering and I realized that this was perhaps not the greatest of ideas as you can see me basically just drifting as a result of no gravity and stuff I basically just pointed myself retrograde and used that to slow myself down point back to the station move forwards and then use the RCS for the more gentle part of the um, part of the um, um, towards the fuel station A and yes this um, next part will be very very sped up because actually uh, docking the two ports together is definitely quite challenging just because to cut down on size and bendiness I did um, um, reduce the amount of movement in the uh, refueling uh, stick I guess you'd call it refueling hose on the top of the craft uh, which meant that you have to refuel right next to it and anyway, here's just some nice slowed down footage of me approaching the uh, refueling rig and slowing down to a zero and yeah so this is how I did it I kind of unlocked it and spun it around a bit and then kind of I uh, figured out what I was doing because I'd worked out in my head how I'd theoretically do it but um, I guess it never quite you know properly clicked in my brain but then I yeah, saw it there and then open that one out and uh, there we have a nice um, extended out um, thing except the uh, motor turned off because we ran out of electrical power so that's why I'm just deploying the solar panels now and then uh, and then I'm just turning it around to be in the correct orientation now I had actually um, suspected that I had come in at the wrong height however that was not an issue because I designed the uh, port on both the uh, craft and the uh, refueling rig to be able to change in height which was how I got over that gap and was able to dock the two successfully and then off camera um, refueling I'm in fact not going to refuel on camera for you guys because well that's possibly the most boring thing you could possibly show someone on Kerbal Space Program simply because, well, <laughs> refueling is... it's arduous, it's just resources coming into existence. Just by the way, if you do want a, a nice scam, you could, uh, I mean, set up a refueling rig just off the, uh, just off Kerbin's ru runway, fill it up with, send in a truck, fill it up with empty uh, fuel things, 
filled with empty fuel things, filled up with fuel from the resupplying rig, and then drive it back and um, drive it back to the um, station now full, and uh, sorry, runway now full, recover it and get some profits. I mean, not saying that I've done that in this save, but it's definitely an idea I thought about. Anyway, we're docked to the rig and refueling can commence. It is, however, quite wobbly. Uh, however, it does even out, which is great because I was a bit concerned there, just because it's only really standing on three th three pieces of um, SSTO gear and four landing struts. But there we are. We've done the um, mining rig justice, and it's here doing its job. So yes, thank you to everyone who watched. If you're watching this, uh, I would highly recommend that you subscribe to see uh, more of my content and turn on the notification bell. Please leave a like, it's always appreciated. Commenting is a great way to get in touch with me. Other than that, thank you for watching.